Tractate Avodah Zara, page 22. Today, Mitz Hashem, we're going to finish the first Perek, Lifnei Edehen. We are on page 22, eight lines from the top of the page. The sensitive subject of partnership between a Jew and a non-Jew is one of the subjects we're going to discuss uh, today. Um, I'd like to begin with the Rambam. Rambam, Ilchot Shabbat, chapter 6. I'm reading from the translation of the Quran edition. In a case where a Jew and a non-Jew have joined ownership of a field, those days use ownership of oven, bathhouse, water mill, or store. And upon forming the partnership, they agreed that the non-Jew alone should receive the profits from the work that he performs on Shabbat, and the Jew alone should receive the profit of another day of the week, this arrangement is permitted. And you see more in the Shulchan Aruch HaRachayim, the Code of Jewish Law, chapter 245. If this agreement was not reached initially, then when they come to divide the profits, the non-Jew receives the profit from every Shabbat, and the profits for the remainder of the week is divided equally between the two partners. So here is the... Um, while we mention in the sugiya, it's not just a non-Jew, it's a idolater. So we talked yesterday about a idolater that does work in the field on Shabbat, or in the, uh, we talk about Kuti and the Samaritans that uh, we're concerned about doing work in the intermediary days, the Chol Moed. Now the Gemara brings a discussion among the Amoraim, Hanhu Morika A. Morika A, it's the um, saffron grows. Now you have a joint ownership uh, and they have a arrangement according to which, so they have here the carton, the carcom is like spice land. So you have one partner is a Jew, another partner is a non-Jew. So regardless if that field belongs to them in a sense of partnership or it's um, a, um, a share corper, the Be'ur al and Reshmem Hay um, I explain that um, in general, as we said, partnership between a Jew and non-Jew by itself is not a problem as long as it's not the issue of Melechet Shabbat, of doing work on the Shabbat. The question that Rishonim posted, as we learn in Sanhedrin, page 63b, we learn about Avu HaDishmuel. Um, he was concerned if the idolater, when you do a partnership, he'll take an oath, and he take an oath by his I idols. Um, uh, said that is a problem. Um, so therefore, um, it's the issue. But uh, the Ramban, the Ran brought the Ramban, who said that it's midat chasidut. It's not prohibited anyway. So here we talk about um, this type of morikai, the oved kochavim nakit beshabta. So the the idolater take upon himself to do the work on Shabbat. The Israel bechad beshabbat. And the fellow Jew took possession of it on Sunday. So basically that's the, the partnership. So they, they came before the Rava, before the, the, the great leader, to find out if they divide their profits equally. Sharalehu, Rava permitted them to do so. So again, we have to know the whole... Um, arrangement in details, but apparently if this is the arrangement, it wasn't an issue. Eitivei Ravina Lerava, Israel v'oved kochavim shekiblu sadeh b'shutafut. If you have a, a fellow Jew and idolater that receive in partnership tenancy of the field, 
So they basically uh, have the uh, agreement that they walk on a field and receive part of a, its produce in exchange. That's basically the Arisut, the share corporate. לא יאמר ישראל לעובד כוכבים תול כחכך בשבת ואני בחול. So we, we cannot say, the fellow Jews say not say to a non-Jew, take your portion of the profit of your walk on Shabbat, and I'll take my portion of the walk one of the day of the rest of the week. The, the reason one may not do so is that it turns out that when the non-Jew walks on Shabbat, he was laboring party on behalf of the Jewish partner. That's the Rabbeinu Yonah. Now, Bediavad, you see in Reish Mem Hay more on that. The question is if he is the Shaliach for the uh, Jews. So, Imit Numit Chatchila, if they make initially a stipulation agreement between them, Mutar. So you can, it, 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 it's permitted. So again, the partnership is that the one share of the profit in exchange of his work on Shabbat, and the Jew receive a share of the work and the perform during the one of the days of the week. So Rashi tells us that if the stipulation is came to calculate the number of the weekdays of which the Jew should receive a profit corresponding to the number of the Shabbatot that the non-Jew walks is prohibited um, because that when the non-Jew walk on Shabbat he was walking on behalf of the Jew. Rashi It's not that they make a stipulation, a precondition in advance Obviously, we have a lot to say why Rashi used it. Rashi said clearly that he's basically making him an agent. So therefore, Ichsif, it was a great embarrassment for Rava that he ruled incorrectly. Lesof Igalai Milta, by the end, they discovered the Hitnu Meikara Havu, that those who planted the Karkum, the spice land, they make a precondition and they make such an arrangement that um, before receiving the field, that the way they divided the work. So it means that Ravad did not rule wrongly. Rav Gvihami Beikatil is the name of a place. Amar Hanhu Shatilei de Orla Ava. It was a, a Jew and idolater that came before Rava. And they have, they, they form a partnership with regard to those Orla um, saplings to tend to them and sell them. So they, they receive it in the share corporate in order that they plant a new sapling, which is basically the fruit prohibited the first three years because we know that's called Orla by Turalo. So they, 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 they make a deal that they split e each year half or one third or one quarter from the crop, and it was after they received the field, Oved Kohali Vim Achil Shnei Deorla, Vizrael Shnei Dehei Teira. So here the deal is that the uh, idolater will walk and uh, profit from them during the Orla years, the first three years after the tree is planted, when it's prohibited for a Jew to eat his prof uh, fruits. And the deal is that the Jew will walk and profit them from the year that is the fruit is permitted, which is the following three years. They brought before the Rava. Shralu. Rava permitted them to do so. So the Ravid, you see it, many other Mephoshim struggle with this. What exactly 
and you see the Rambam, you see the Ran. It's it's a discussion. Let me give you a little vignette of the Rambam. Rambam Milchot Ma'achalot Asurot Chapter Ten. With regard to a non-Jew and a Jew who jointly planted trees, if they initially agree that the non-Jew will benefit from the produce during the Orla years, and the Jew will benefit during the years when the produce is permitted, uh, when the produce is permitted, this is permitted if they did not initially make this arrangement, it is prohibited. Now, the Vilna Gaon said here on the Shulchan Aruch 294, um, furthermore, the former case is permitted only when the Jew does not calculate the amount of produce received by a non-Jew during the Ola years and then take a corresponding amount of the produce. If this arrangement was agreed upon, it is prohibited, as the Jew is considered to be um, deriving benefit from Ola produce. This is according to the opinion of the Rambam, who explains that in the case in the Gemara here, is one where they made a stipulation. The Rambam holds that even if they initially made this deal, it's prohibited to do so. Now the Rema, and you see also the Shach writes, that some permitted even if they did not initially agree to this ar arrangement, and the Jew later says to the non-Jew, take your profit from the Ola years, and I'll take mine from the years when the produce is permitted. And basically that's the Taz hold the way that Rashi said. But you see in the Shach, in Yoridea 294, it is prohibited for a Jew to calculate the exact amount of produce that is considered Ola. So the Gemara asks, "Veha otvei Ravina lerava," but didn't Ravina object to ruling that issue by the Rava? He asks a question when you have idolater that does work on Shabbat for Israel, so it's, it's uh, basically he's his agent. So they said, the Gemara said, so basically provide the support to the ruling of Rava. The, so the Chazunish in Yoradea Kufa in Zayn said, because the Israel is not is not a derived be direct benefit joy during the time of that work, he, he, he derived benefit and joy Anyway, but Rava embarrassed by Ravina's statement. So they said, Lahadam, Lo Ayu Dvorim Maolam. Because according to Rav Gviha's view, Rava never embarrassed after Ravina brought this Braita. Ibailu. Stamamai. It wasn't specified. That the, the non Jew walk on Shabbat and the Jew during the week. But they um, also did not calculate the profits, so they will split the earning equally. What's the halacha? Tashma, imit numit hila muta. Hasta ma su e masefa in baule hashbon asu. Hasta ma muta. Ela meha leka ma mishma. Le mishma mina. The man left it without solving this affair. Um, who, what's the din in, in the in the stama? You see in the Rambam, Sefer Zmanim Ilchot Shabbat chapter six. If the Jew and the non-Jew did not initially agree that the non-Jew should receive the profits from the work that he perform on Shabbat and the Jews should receive the profits of another day of the week, and they also do not wish to implement this uh, um, arrangement, but simply wish to divide the profits, the non-Jew should take one-seventh of the profits for himself. The remaining profit should be divided equally between the two. This is the opinion of the Rambam, who rules stringently in this matter. The Ramah writes that after the fact, there are those who permit the Jew to divide the profits 
with the non-Jew, even if they did not make the in, an initial stipulation. That's the Rosh and Rabbeinu Yona. Because in the case of uncertainty, with regard to a rabbinic prohibition, the ruling is lenient. So therefore, if one will incur a significant loss by following the stringent ruling, one may rely on the lenient opinion. That's basically Shulchan Aruch Horachayim 2.45. So as we said, Ela meha leka lemash bamina, hadran alach lifnei eidei hen. Perak Shani, Chapter 2, Ein Ma'amidin. Pagan societies will tolerate all sorts of terrible acts. So here you have the sages uh, enacted a number of laws to basically prevent us from having part in or falling victim to the immoral or murder acts. A person may not leave his animal in the stables of inns owned by idolaters because they are suspected of committing bestiality, having relation with animals. The seven Noahide laws, the seven universal commandments, Giving to Noah in the Torah after he came out of the ark, must kept by all people, including non-Jews. Um, one of these commandments forbid acts of bestiality, and you see it in Gemara and Sanhedrin, page 58. It is prohibited for a Jew to cause anyone, even an idolater, to sin. That's Leviticus 19. And the sages therefore prohibited leaving an animal in idolater's st stable since that may bring him to sin, that's Tosfot Yom Tov. A Jewish woman may not be alone with idolaters, because idolaters are suspected of immorality, and they might sin with her. So the idea of Gmor in Kiddushin, you see it in the Mishnah first, in Kiddushin chapter 4, Mishnah 12, they said that the um, woman may not be alone even with the Jewish men, so that they should not come to sin. But however, in certain cases, for example, if the man's wife is present, is permitted because he will not sin with the woman when his wife there. An idolater, however, might sin with the woman even when his wife is present. So therefore, our Mishnah teaches that the woman may not be alone with idolater, even if their wives are there. See it more in the Meiri, in the Raived. Anyway. A Jewish man may not be alone with idolaters. Again, in those days it was much a serious in the sense that it was well known. Because they are suspected of committing murder, especially with the Jews, this concern was not given as the reason uh, a woman may not be alone with the idolater, because we do not suspect that the idolater will murder a woman. This is because women by nature arouse pity in others and are generally more peaceful than men, that's what Yom Tov said. The concern that the idolater may kill the Jew existed only in the places where the government was lax in punishing those who will murder Jews. Um, in places where the government deals harshly with all killers, it is permitted to be alone with idolater. You see Chuvot Chavot Yair 66 and Binat Adam 126.16 and the Ritva. Uh, 23. Page 22b. So here the Gemara struggle with the idea that is a general statement that idolater suspected for bestiality. He bring another Brita, which is in Tosefta, the said Beramini Lokhimem Bemale Korban, Ven Hoshim Lomishum Rovea Velomishum Nirva. 
They said that we can take an animal for, for offering. We are not concerned over the animal that they capitulated with the person or the animal was object to bestiality. And not having set aside for idol worship and due to the animal itself having been worshipped. If you tell me that it's um, the animal was set aside for idolatry uh, or was itself worship, like you see in India, right? Uh, places like that. So if, if you have a set aside or so, so for worship, then the idolater will not have sold it to a Jew in the first place. But when it's come to animal captured with a person or the animal that was object to bestiality, let us uh, have a concern in the line that the ruling of the Mishnah. That, um, the idea is that he spares his own animal, the idolater, that he is not committed this act of disgusting bestiality, because um, um, it cannot, um, uh, the animal should not be a barren animal. Because when the, the moment they have a bestiality, they cause the animal to become barren. So you will not do it. Tosfot Reed said that uh, if he did it, so the behemah is, is not befitting to, to Akrava. See here the 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 uh, Rambam, Ilchot Isurei Mizbeach, Chapter 3, all livestock may be purchased from a non-Jew for use as offering, as there is no concern that it might have been an object of bestiality or was set aside for idol worship or was itself worship. Hateinach Nekevot, we understand that it is a female animal, that they should not become barren. Zcharim Ma'ika Lememar, how about male? Amarav Kana ulim makhishan babasa. The moment that happened, it makes the animal deteriorated, the flesh, they make it physically weaker. Ela adetan lochi be mamero yishleim lechoshem arivala. Maybe the shepherd did it. The, 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 the idolater commit bestiality. Roishleim itira mishum misez techar. He's afraid, the shepherd that they, 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 they fulfill these wages that will result when it's discovered. So they said, in who those idolaters that knows each other, and they know that he is involved with this, they don't have a fear. They don't have a fear. That was sort of said that that, that uh, um, the same way as the um, stylus etches script upon marvel, a sinner knows his fellow sinner, which is transgressor, is actually aware of others who act in the same manner. Yachez harim nekavot lo nizbun dechai shedid ma marabi ale ilavei kevan de migare b'mirtata ela ad etan rav Yosef armal talotar bekal ba vlotish rebe rav beushpiza. She's afraid to engage in bestiality. So therefore it should be permitted for her to raise a dog. The meat that throated it, so not suspect of bestiality. נקבות אצל נקבות מי תמה לא מייחדין אמר מרוק וברכה מבני שהגויים מבני שהאומים מצויים אצל נשי חבריהם ופעמים שלא מוצאה הוא מוצא את הבמה ורובה. ואי בהייתם אפילו מוצא נא מרובה דמר מר חביבה להם בהמתן של ישראל יותר מנשותיהן. דמר רבי יוחנן בשעה שבה נחש על חווה הטיל בזוהמה היה אחרי ישראל נמי ישראל שעמדו על הר סיני פסקה זוהמתם נוכרים שלא עמדו על זה הר סיני לא פסקה זוהמתם. ובאה לו עופות מי תשמע, דאמר רב יהודה, אמר שמואל, משום רבי חנינא, אני ראיתי נוכרי שלקח אבז מן השוק, רבעה חנקץ לאה ואכלה. אמר רבי ירמיה מדיפתי, אני ראיתי ערבי אחד שלקח ירך מן השוק, הוא חקק בה כדי רבעה רבעה צלאה ואכלה. 
רבינה אמר לו, קשה לך תחילה הדיעבד.